This is Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a head and neck assessment. Now, if you would like to see a complete head to toe assessment, you can check out this card up here in the corner or in the YouTube description below to access the video on how to do that. Now, before you do a head and neck assessment, you'll want to provide privacy, wash your hands, and explain to the patient what you'll be doing. And you'll want to gather your supplies. You'll need an otoscope to look at the ears a tongue blade to look in the mouth, a pin light to assess the eyes, and gloves. So let's get started. We are first going to inspect the head, and we are looking at the skin color. He, it's nice and pink. We're also going to make sure that the head is the same size as how it should be for the body, and it is. And we're looking for any abnormal movements or twitching of the face that he can't control that are involuntary. We don't see anything. And we're making sure that the face is symmetrical. There's no drooping on one side, like in this picture. There's drooping on one side of the face, and this can be seen in Bell's palsy or in stroke. And we're also just looking at the eyes and the ears. Are they at the same level? And while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and look at the facial expressions and test cranial nerve seven, which is the facial nerve. So can you close your eyes tightly for me and open them up? Okay, now smile for me, frown, and puff out your cheeks. Okay, and he did that with ease, so that cranial nerve is intact. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna palpate the head, the cranium. We're gonna check for any masses, indentations, look for skin breakdown, any infestations. And for this part, I like to wear gloves. So let's look at the hair. So what we're doing is we're filling for any masses, indentations, and also with this, we're looking for any skin breakdown. And if your patient's immobile, you really wanna check the back of the head back here because they're laying on it a lot and there can be breakdown back there. Also, while you're doing that, look inside the hair. Make sure there is no infestations like lice and there's no abrupt like rounding areas of baldness which could represent alopecia. Then after that, since this patient has a beard, you want to check the beard as well, any lesions, any infestations or anything like that and just look around. And then once you're done with that, what you wanna do is you'll doff your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the temporal artery and we're gonna palpate them bilaterally and they are both found right here and that his are about a two plus. And then while we're right there, we're gonna go ahead and test cranial nerve five, which is the trigeminal nerve. And this nerve is responsible for many things like mastication. So what I'm gonna have you do, Ben, is I'm gonna have you clench your teeth, like bite down for me. And I'm going to feel the masseter muscle, which is right there, and it should be a nice firm ball, and then feel the temporal muscle. Now what I'm gonna do to also test that nerve is have him try to open his mouth against resistance. So try to do that for me. Okay, and he can do that. Now, while we're here, we're gonna go ahead and feel the temporal mandibular joint. And we're gonna feel right here, and I'm gonna have you open and close your mouth, and I'm feeling for any grating or clicking sensations, and I feel none. Then we're gonna palpate the sinuses, and I'm going to put pressure on these two sinuses right here and you tell me if you feel any pain, okay? So the max, maxilla, maxillary? No. And the frontal? No. Next we're moving down to the eyes and we're going to inspect the eyes first. And we're looking at several things. We're looking at the eyelid, we're looking at the scleral, which is the white of the eyes, we're looking at the iris, we're looking at the pupil, and we're looking at the conjunctiva. So, you shouldn't see any swelling of the eyelids. You should see that the sclera is white and shiny. It shouldn't be yellow like in jaundice. And the conjunctiva, when you pull down the lower lid, have the patient look up, it should be nice and pink. It shouldn't be red. You shouldn't see any drainage or anything like that. Then look at the eyes. How do they set in the eye socket? Is, are they equal? For instance, is, is there any strabismus? Is there a cross eye where one eye turns in more, turns out or up or down, and these eyes are normal? There's no strabismus. Next, you wanna look at anisocoria, where you have 
where one pupil would be smaller than the other pupil. Are they equal in size? Normal pupils should be three to five millimeters in their measurement and here his are about a three and they are equal. Next what we're gonna do is we're going to assess some cranial nerves. We're gonna be looking at cranial nerve three, which is ocular motor, four, trochlear, and then six, which is abducens. And we're gonna do several tests to check their function. The first one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking for any involuntary shaking of the eye called nystagmus. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna take our pin light, we're gonna hold it about 12 to 14 inches away from the patient's nose. And Ben, what I want you to do is keep your head still, don't move your head, and just use your eyes to watch where I move the pin light. And as you're doing this, you're gonna do, you're gonna perform it in the six cardinal fields of gaze. And you're just gonna move it and you're looking for any involuntary shaking of the eyes. So here we go. Next, we're gonna see how reactive the pupils are to light. And to do that, we're gonna dim the lights a little bit and we're gonna have the patient stare off at a distant object that helps dilate those pupils. And then we're gonna shine using our pin light in at the side and we're gonna see how that pupil responds. It should constrict. And then on the other side, it should constrict as well. So say their baseline pupil size was like three millimeters, it should go down to one milliliter and it should happen on both sides. Okay, so Ben, stare off at that object right on the wall over there for me. Okay, and that dilates the pupils and we're just gonna shine light in at the side. Okay, constrict, constrict. Okay, let them dilate again and then go to the other side, do the same again. And they both constricted in equal size. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for accommodation. And how we do that is we turn the lights back on. We just previously had them dim, but we now make it light again. We're gonna have him stare off at a distant object that helps dilate the pupils. And we're gonna take a pin light. You can use a pin light finger and you're just gonna slowly move it inward to the nose. And what you're looking for is that those pupils constrict, they accommodate and the eyes cross while looking at the pin light. So, here we go. Stare off in the distance, please. And I don't want you to move your head or anything. Just keep it real still and just follow this pin light, okay? Ready? Okay. So now we can document, because we just checked all of the things with the eyes, we can document that the pupils are equal, round, reactive to light, and the accommodate. So that's where that acronym P-E-R-R-L-A comes into play. Next, we're gonna move on to the ears. So first, what we do is we inspect the ears. We look on the outside of the ear. Is there any abnormalities, any redness, any drainage, anything like that? And Ben, are you having any pain in your ear? Yeah. Okay, and sometimes if you have patients who've had long-term gout on the helix of the ear, they may have what's called a tophi, which is an accumulation of like a whitish, yellowish, uric acid crystal on the skin. So if you ever see that, that is what that looks like. Next, we're gonna palpate on the ear. We're just gonna move it around, and Ben, tell me if you have any tenderness whenever I do that and any, feel any abnormal masses or lesions, and then move the targets a little bit. Does that hurt or anything like that? No. Okay, so no pain or tenderness. Then we're gonna palpate the mastoid process, which is the big hump behind the ear, and we're looking at it. Is it swollen? Is there any redness? And whenever I touch on it, Ben, does it hurt? No. Okay, and just see if the patient reports any tenderness with that. Then while you're there, you can use the otoscope to inspect the tympanic membrane. And remember, the tympanic membrane should be a pearly gray translucent color and should be shiny. So for an adult, you're gonna pull the pin of the ear up and back. And we're just going to inspect it. And also while we're looking at that, we are looking at the cone of light. And remember the cone of light in the right ear should be at five o'clock and in the left ear should be at seven o'clock. 
Next, we're gonna do one more thing with the ear. We're gonna test cranial nerve eight, which is the vestibulocochlear nerve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include one of his ears and then whisper two words on the other side. He needs to tell me what I said. So, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna include this one. Apple, banana. Okay, very good. Cat, dog. Okay, and that nerve is intact. Next, we're gonna move on to the nose, and we're gonna inspect the nose. We're gonna make sure it's midline on the face, which it is. We're gonna look at the septum. Is it deviated, anything like that? And ask the patient, are you having any trouble with your nose? Are you having any drainage or anything like that? No. And you want them to make, you wanna check the patency of the nose. So Ben, I'm gonna have you occlude one side of the nostril, breathe out of the other, and vice versa. Okay, heard airflow. Airflow, nice and patent, because sometimes people can have polyps that can block it or the deviated septum. Then you want to take your pin light and you just want to look inside the nose, look for any drainage, redness, or any like polyps or anything like that. And everything looks clear, I don't see anything. And then we're going to test the olfactory cranial nerve one, the sense of smell. So Ben, what I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you close your eyes and I'm gonna put something in front of your nose and have you breathe in and smell and you tell me what you smell. And whenever you do this, use something that's pleasant smelling, not something that's really stinky because it could elicit like a gag reflex or something like that if the person has a sensitive nose, okay? Vanilla. Okay, and this was vanilla extract, and that is correct. So that cranial nerve is intact. Next, we're gonna move on to the mouth. And for this part, I like to wear gloves. And if your patient is coughing and hacking, you might wanna wear a mask with a shield so you don't get any mucus on your face or in your mucous membrane. So first, what we're gonna do, we're just inspecting the lips, make sure they're a nice pink color, they're not chapped, there's no sores on them. And one thing with a lot of patients, whenever their oxygen saturations are low, their lips may turn dusky or blue color. So you wanna make sure they're nice and pink because that can represent our oxygen level. Now let's inspect the inside of the mouth. But first let's test cranial nerve 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve. And what I'm gonna have you do, Ben, is I'm gonna have you stick out your tongue and move it side to side. Okay, and he does that with ease. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to inspect the inside of the mouth. You'll need a tongue blade for that. And just open up your mouth for me. And I'm gonna look on the inside of the cheeks, nice and pink, don't see any sores. You're looking to see if they're nice and pink and there's no lesions or anything like that. And stick out your tongue for me. The tongue should be moist like this and pink. You don't want it to be beefy red, which is like a pernicious anemia. You don't want it to be dry or cracked. That could be dehydration. Okay, you can put the tongue in. Then I want you to lift up your tongue for me and look for any lesions underneath the tongue. That's where mouth cancer can hang out and I don't see any. Okay, you can close. Then um, you'll, while you're also looking at the gums, open up a little bit. You're gonna look around for cavities, any loose or broken teeth, no dental caries in there. Then, okay, sort of open up your mouth a little bit more, put your tongue down, and you're gonna look at the soft and hard palate. Now, while you're in there, you want to look at the uvula. Make sure it is nice in midline, and his is nice in midline, and we're going to test cranial nerve nine, the glossopharyngeal. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you say ah, and what you want is that uvula to move up. Ah. Uh, okay, and then we're just gonna test the gag reflex. I'm sort of just gonna poke a little bit back there and elicit a gag reflex. Okay, there you go, <laughs> gag's really good. And um, cranial nerve 10, the vagus is intact because he's able to talk, with, talk to me without hoarseness and he's able to swallow. Then when you're done inspecting the mouth, be sure you take off your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Now moving on to the neck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna inspect the neck first. So you're gonna have the patient extend the neck up a little bit and you're looking at that trachea. Is it midline? Look for any lesions and look for any lumps like what you might see in thyroid problems like a gorder. And we don't see any of that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna test cranial nerve 11, which is the accessory nerve. So Ben, what I'm gonna have you do is move your head side to side, up and down, 
okay? And then shrug, try to shrug against my resistance. And he does that with ease, so that nerve is intact. Then we're gonna place him at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna have him turn his head to the side. And what we're looking at is the jugular vein. We're looking for any jugular vein distension, JVD. So Ben, I'm gonna just turn your head to the side like that. And we're looking for any distension of the vein and we do not see any. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna palpate. So we're gonna palpate that trachea just to confirm it is midline. And Ben, do you feel any tenderness or anything like that? Ask him if he feels any tenderness. And I don't feel any lumps. Then next, what we're gonna do is we're going to palpate the lymph nodes, all sites of those. And Ben, as I do this, tell me if you feel any tenderness. And what I'm feeling for is any hard lumps or anything that may be inflamed. So what we're gonna do, turn a little bit this way. And there we go. We're gonna start at the pre-auricular, which is right in front of the ears. Then we're gonna to go to the back of the ears, the post-auricular. Then we're gonna to go to the occipital, the parotid, jugulodigastric. Then we're gonna to go to the submandibular, and then the submental. Then we're gonna to go to the superficial cervical, and then we're gonna make our way down to the deep cervical chain. Any tenderness so far? Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna to go to the posterior cervical, and then right above the clavicle, we're gonna to go to the supraclavicular. And did not feel anything and no tenderness. Next, we're gonna palpate the carotid artery. And this is one artery that you do not palpate bilaterally, you do one individually. So we're gonna feel on this side, and you're gonna find it next to where the groove of the neck and next to the trachea. And his is nice and bounding, it's two plus. Then we're just gonna feel on the other side and same strength, two plus. Then lastly, what we wanna do is we're gonna auscultate the carotid artery and you're gonna do one side at a time and you're gonna compare sides. And you're gonna listen with the bell of your stethoscope and we're listening for a brewy, which is a swishing sound. So Ben, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you breathe in, breathe out and hold it for me, okay? okay. Go, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, you can breathe normally now. Did not hear it on that side. Okay, breathe in, breathe out for me, and hold it. Okay, and I did not hear a brewery on that side as well. So that wraps up how to assess the head and neck. And don't forget to check out that video that demonstrates the complete head to toe assessment. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.